It's Isaiah, back from that little mini toy run that we did and trying to get back inside of the gif of the content creation stuff. I will admit that this video wasn't planned. Everything I'm saying is just going to be off the pure top of my head with like no kind of plan going on down the list of what I want to try to say. So I just ask that you guys bear with me because this is going to be very free form. But in today's video, I kind of want to talk about the Gibson SG. <laughs> So this is a brand new guitar. I bought this guitar, I believe last year. Can't really say bought, more like I traded in a lot of stuff to get this guitar. It's a 2023 model. It's only a year old. I pretty much got this thing fresh. So basically what happened was I was going through a Derek Trucks kit. Still am. I mean, Derek is awesome. He's such a good guitar player. And I was super interested in learning how to play slide guitar. And my Stratocaster, kind of just wasn't doing it for me. This was kind of my entry into Gibson guitars. I've heard a lot of bad things about new Gibson guitars. Heard a few good things about new Gibson guitars. And I kind of want to talk about my personal experience owning one for an entire year as a brand new Gibson guitar. You know, it's not a 90s, it's not a 60s or 70s, or anything like this. This is brand new. It starts in the 23. This was made in 2023. It is the beginning of 2024 as we're recording this video. And yeah, let's just talk about it a little bit. Also, for the nerds out there, <laughs> just in case you guys are wondering, for the tone right now, I'm using the Tone X and the AC30 model that is provided by Tone Junkie, I believe. This is the AC30 Edge Breakup Tone. We're using a Wampler Tumnus, just the mini one, not the deluxe, which I love the sound of right now. It's really fun. Um, we're using the Volante for just a tad bit of spring reverb, because I still haven't gotten a dedicated reverb pedal that I like yet. One will be coming soon, and I'm going to document it on the channel, so stay tuned for that. And we're using the tape saturation side of the v1 strymon deco for just a little bit of uh beef added to the ac30 and all that together sounds a little like this <laughs> So it could sound like this. Fun stuff. I want to talk about some of the things that I didn't like, and then I'm going to talk about some of the things that I did like on this guitar. 
and still like because to be honest when it comes to the negatives and the positives from my personal experience owning this guitar the positives have heavily outweighed the negatives as of now so the main thing that's kind of bugged me when it comes to owning this guitar it's really hot and what i mean when i say it's really hot is when i'm using real amps like when i was using the hdrx 20 literally if i take my hands off the strings this thing would just scream like it would just start screaming at me. No questions asked. It didn't matter if there was a pedal in front of it or not. And I run my amp settings fairly low gain. The HXDA50 is a different story because there really isn't a clean inside of that amp that you can run. But with the Hendrix 20, I ran it pretty low gain and I will use my tube screamer style pedal a little push, a little extra dirt inside of the mix. I've been trying to get with uh, my tech to see if there's anything we can do. I wasn't sure if shielding these would help. I wasn't sure what exactly would work in terms of just getting it to calm down a little bit. But ever since I've been using Tonex and Helix and stuff like that, I haven't had to worry about it as much. So it's not a big priority. Another thing that's kind of a nitpick You'll notice that these two like stickers that goes on top of the knobs are missing. They just fell off. And it wasn't even like any heavy damage happened to the guitar or anything. They just fell off over time. These two are staying. I mean, it looks kind of cool to me. It gives it kind of an age feeling to it, an age vibe, but come on. <laughs> <laughs> they could they didn't have any stronger glue in the factory you know what i'm saying man it's just one of those weird things that i don't completely understand as far as the guitar's weight goes i'm a fan of it but i will say there are a few times where that neck dive actually affected me i haven't been affected with neck dive every single time i play this sg like a lot of other sg players deal with but there'll be a few times where like it's a long night and man, my shoulders start aching bad. But for the most part, I'm really manhandled with the left side of the guitar most of the time anyway. So I've never really had that issue per to say, if I'm just being honest. The other thing I didn't like is that this guitar isn't a case queen, but every time I dinked it in like the first quarter of owning it, I felt bad. I felt super bad. Literally a strap fell into the guitar right here and put a big chip in it. And it made me so sad for like two days straight. And then since I'm a tall person, I had walked inside of a church not knowing there was a ceiling fan. And I had like the gig bag, book bag thing this thing comes with on. And it smacked the top of the headstock. And when I say I was so scared this thing was gonna break, cause all I hear are these horror stories about Gibson's breaking, man. But it literally just added like this little chip thing down here right next to the tuning key. Might try to get a close up of that inside of the video so you you know what I'm talking about? And I was like, come on, man, that kind of sucks. As far as the back goes, I haven't gotten any buckle rash on it necessarily, but there's like definitely some little chippy chips from a belt starting to get there and nitro starting to wear off in different spots on the back. I noticed that the nitro is wearing on the back a lot more than the front. And then since I play this guitar a lot without a pick, there's like kind of a wear spot going on on this pit guard right here where like the oil on my hands are just kind of slapping it like that a lot because I'll be like, you know, like doing something like that pretty much. Honestly, that's all I really got in terms of what I didn't like about owning this guitar. In terms of what I enjoy about this guitar, it's super fun to play. You know, it was just something completely different than what I'm used to. I had to relearn this kind of knob situation going on down here because before owning this guitar, all I had really played was the Stratocaster three knob situation. I hadn't really branched out into anything else. I love this bridge and I love being able to just put my hand right there and rest it while I'm playing and kind of, you know, just kind of do like the, uh, That wasn't a Dwayne Allman lick, but like kind of just playing kind of similar to that Dwayne Allman no pick technique. It's just really fun and it's really comfortable to have somewhere to put 
my hand while I play guitar because as you know if you put your hand there with a Stratocaster and it has a trim in it it's going to start going out of tune it's going to get shaky on you a little bit it's not necessarily the best thing in the world also I love how punchy these humbuckers sound they're just different than most humbucking guitars that I've played in terms of them not being necessarily dark you know I've played a few guitars and they'll be super dark but these kind of retain a punchiness to it that I like I'm not sure what the specific humbuckers they are they're putting in just the SG standard but these ones definitely take a huge win for me when it comes to sound because it remains clear to my ears unlike a lot of humbuckers I played which I thoroughly enjoy and I really like that I did forget one negative about this guitar and it's kind of the a really obvious one it's just a part of the Gibson design thing doesn't stay in tune like the way that I play guitar personally it doesn't stay in tune once I start getting into some G string bending or some B string bending, it's going to get knocked out a little bit, but I've kind of just picked up this routine when I'm playing live that I just tune my guitar after every song. Anyway, to be honest, it was something that I've seen, uh, Dylan doing from Smokestack. And ever since then, I've just been kind of picking up on it. I've just been tuning my guitar after every song. So it never gives me that off sound or that off feeling unless it really gets whack out of tune in the middle of a song but back to the positives what can i say it's a classic guitar and it was gorgeous when i first got it i still love how it looks don't get me wrong it's just when it came in like this was like a really nice ox dark red the fretboard was a little bit darker i think at the time these were a little bit brighter, like the Gibson logo and this uh, thing in the middle. I don't even know what it's called. That's how much I don't know about Gibsons. I don't even know what this is called. If you know what this is called, can you talk about it inside the comments for me, please? Because I'm honestly not sure. But this guitar made me fall in love with Gibson guitars for a while. For a while, I just liked them all. I was digging the SG, Les Paul, Les Paul Jr., Firebirds all that good stuff and I still do I still dig those guitars a lot I don't necessarily at the moment feel like I need to own all of them but I would love to own a Les Paul Jr. specifically and as you know on this channel we're big Boat Cheetah Rock fans here so a Les Paul kind of in that Les Paul custom silhouette thing would be really cool to own I'm just not sure that was something that would be able to make happen for the channel unfortunately at the time but who knows maybe one day we can document it and talk about it a little bit which would be really fun the electronics feel good on it you know it feels like high quality stuff for me at least with what i've played because honestly if i'm just being real honest with you i jumped from squire to american fender to japan fender to american gibsons i've never owned an epiphone i've never desired to own an epiphone it just never been my thing. I don't know what I'm really comparing with here in terms of that, if I'm just being completely honest, but the guitar feels like it's built pretty well, honestly. I haven't had any electrical issues. I didn't have to get a setup for it. It came out of the box playing pretty darn great. A main thing that I didn't like is that it didn't come with a hard case, which I was able to get over over time because the gig bag is a good gig bag it's a solid gig bag but you know when you look at a $17.99 price tag and there's not a hard case it could be confusing at times and yes I know I'm saying this as somebody that talks a lot about PRS guitars they got $3,000 guitars shipping without cases unfortunately but you know i guess that's just the time that we're in right now as far as guitar playing goes and guitars i genuinely like this guitar a lot and i wanted it a year i couldn't see myself getting rid of this guitar i can't see it happening it's really fun to play it's great for playing slide it's great for playing normal i can use it for neo soul I can use it for J-Rock. I can use it for some heavier things if I got into it. It feels pretty versatile, but still simple enough without any lock and trim or anything like that for me to stay in my wheelhouse and be able to switch it up whenever I want to without any complicated issues. I honestly will say that they're a little high in price, in my opinion versus resale value you're gonna pay $17.99 for an SG new and if you ever want to sell it first party you may get $900 to $1200 for it it's a big it's a big step down <laughs> it's one of those things where you're buying it as a player and you kind of just have to accept the fact that hey 
I'm buying this just to play it. And if I ever sell it, I just got to accept that I'm not going to get my money back. I'm not getting close to getting my money back. It's just what's going to happen. But overall, the ending verdict for this guitar with me is that it's a good purchase. I think it's a great guitar. Personally, I have had my experience with bad gifts and stuff. You know, working inside of the shop, I've seen them come in and come out. And for the most part, I can say that the 2023 year of standards have somewhat of a seal of an approval from me but when we start talking about the studios and the trap pros maybe not so much but for the most part most standards i've played have been pretty good when they had the 23 on the front of the headstock in the comments why don't you tell me what's your favorite year of gibson is besides 59 please <laughs> Besides 59, I want to see something a little unique. So far for me, I actually really enjoy a lot of the 23 model Gibsons. I played this guitar and I love it. I've really loved this guitar for the time that I've had it. I've played the J45 and the J45 is really cool in my opinion. I played a standard 50s Les Paul and I was dying for it, man. I would have loved to own that guitar. And probably the weirder one out of the 23s i've played is i played a billy joel armstrong and it just had so much mojo to it not because it was a billy joel but because it was a junior because i have a thing for juniors i learned that i learned that pretty early on in this gibson phase of my life oh my god they're just really cool guitars single p90 non-stop rock and roll machine dude just a slab of wood it's a great guitar but i appreciate you guys for checking out this video might do another playing demo right here at the ending without further ado i'll see you guys in the next one so yeah bye